Hello folks, my name is Jay, I'm from Another Dying, and this is going to be a playthrough of Exile Escape from the Pit, from 1995 by Spiderweb Software. Um, yeah, in this first video we're going to do a bit of preambling and then create the characters, and we're going to start playing the game proper in the next episode. So if you're not into all this preamble stuff, if you are like less talking, more playing, then uh, you can just skip ahead. Okay? Alright. So, yes, this is, as said, a shareware game from 1995 and uh, it's made by Spiderweb Software who have been making computer role-playing games for... Uh, ever since then, I guess. They are still at it, they are still making games, and they are still making these huge, complex role-playing games. And uh, Exile is kind of an interesting one. Exile is their debut game, and um, it has kind of an interesting history, or an interesting version history. As you can see here, we have version 2.0.1, which is the one that you can download as freeware from Spiderweb Software's homepage. Um, there are also earlier versions that I've installed here and they are kind of interesting because there's a bit of a difference between them. So um, when Exile 3 came out, what they did was sort of remake Exile 1 and 2 with the sort of the graphics of Exile 3, which are, you know, a bit less amateurish, a bit more professionally drawn and uh, yeah, you know, that is kind of the version that we're going to be playing. However, back in the day, in the 90s, uh, I had, I, I have played the shower versions of Escape from the Pit and Crystal Souls, and uh, I had the original ones. So the ones that fill me with the warm fuzzies are actually these. The thing is, uh, yeah, we're going to play the latest version, but later on, uh, once we've played the game for a bit, I'm going to make a video, sort of an extra video, a bonus video, where we kind of examine the differences and uh, yeah, between the versions. And I'm also going to go into the legacy of the game, because the interesting thing about Exile is that it has been remade, not once, but uh, twice, or maybe even thrice, if you call, if you call this a, a remake too. But um, the game has been properly remade later as a Vernum. So there was a trilogy of games, Avernum 1 to 3, which are exact, well not exact, but they, those are remakes of Exile 1, 2, and 3. Those are sort of the same story, the same world, all this kind of stuff. And later, it has been remade once again as um, Avernum Escape from the Pit, Avernum Crystal Souls, and um, the last one is in development right now. It's going to be released later this year in 2018, um, which is Avernum Ruined World. And so the reason why they've been remade is, first of all, to, I guess, update the games for modern systems. So you, as you can see, I'm running this in a Windows 95. The old Exile games are not, you cannot run them natively on Windows, on modern Windows systems. So you have to actually install a leg legacy system. It runs on Windows 3.1 natively. So you can actually, you know, you can use Windows 3.1 in DOSBox or whatever. I'm running a Windows 95 virtual machine in PCM, which works really well. So I actually recommend that. Um, Blades of Exile, the source po the source code for Blades of Exile, which is sort of the last game in the Exile series and is not part of the trilogy, uh, it is kind of a scenario editor, you know, for these. And because, um, you know, it is essentially the editor version of the Exile engine, in a way. And a ton of scenarios and stuff and uh, have been created by a pretty productive community and for those not to be lost uh, this has actually been the source port the source code for this has been released and this has actually been patched for modern systems so you can actually still play this the other ones you can't and you need an old windows for that so it works from windows 95 to 90 or uh, from windows 3.1 till 98 i've tried all of them um later on i don't know so uh yeah 
that is that. I'm specifically going back to Exile, I'm not playing the Avernum games. I have played a bunch of Avernum Escape from the Pit actually, like 30-40 hours of it. And um, Avernum Escape from the Pit, while being a remake, is different in a lot of ways. It is very streamlined, it's a very streamlined game, it's still a complex, huge role-playing game, but it is... Yeah, it is streamlined. There's a lot of systems that are sort of simplified and even gone, like the food and hunger system of Exile in uh, in the new one, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like, you could also argue that this improves the game. But uh, yeah, I kind of like the way Exile works. But the biggest difference is that Avernum Escape from the Pit is a or like the newest remakes, they are structured like mod more modern role-playing games in a way that the, the quests work. So in Avernum, or in the new remakes, you get quests, like you get a ton of quests, like it starts at the start already when you get into the first fort and um, you meet people, they give you quests like, hey, I want to meet my sister, and you then... You know, you then find the sister and finish the quest and all this kind of stuff. And here's this dungeon, here are these sewers under the first town and we need to rid them of something that poisons the sewers and all this kind of stuff. And what you then get is a quest marker on the map and you go to the quest marker, do what, yeah, you know, the classic, oh no, the normal role-playing thing that most role-playing games do nowadays. Exile Escape from the Pit, or the old Exile games are very much not that. They don't really have a formalized quest system. Um, it's much more about, you know, talking to people, taking note of what they are saying, and that kind of guides you in different directions. But it's a much more open-ended game, and it's a much less directed game. And I actually really like that. And, uh, you know, that's why I think that playing the old Exile game still has a lot of merit even compared to the remakes. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I have actually I have actually bought every Spiderweb software game they have made because, and also the remakes, the Avernum, so Avernum Escape from the Pit is still a very good game. I would super recommend that. But uh, yeah, we're going to play the first one. Preamble, all right, good. I think we are done with that. As I said, I'm going to do at some point an extra video where we take a look at the earlier versions of Exile and also take a look at the remakes at Avernum 1 and also Avernum Escape from the Pit and kind of just contrast the three and just, uh, you know, just uh, get into that because I find that really interesting because I'm a huge nerd, I guess. But we're going to play Escal Exile, Ex Escape from Escal, yeah, Escape from the Pit version 2.0.1, which is sort of the re-released version with a, you know, more modern tile set from Exile 3. Good. Let's start the game. Man, that was a lot of talking. Okay. Yes, rawr. Those are the awesome sound effects of Exile Escape from the Pit. So we're going to start to make a party now. Um, whoops. Make a new party. We're not going to do the prefab. We're going to create our own party. I have kind of, like, I have some experiences from Avernum. Um, way back in the day, in the 90s, when we were playing, when I was playing this, uh, I didn't really understand it. I was actually too little. I was... I was a kid, and um, there were some re some things that prevented me from actually grasping the game, and that was that the game is in English, and I did not understand any English back in the day, and also, uh, you know, I I wasn't really able to understand more complex role playing games. I played this game a lot, and uh, you know, kind of figured out some stuff. I figured out how to murder monsters, definitely, and that casting a fireball is fucking awesome but um yeah i never really understood the game and uh that's also the reason why i want to play this because nowadays i speak english and uh, i have played a ton of role playing games so i'm probably be able to, i'm probably going to be able to grasp this game <clears throat> one thing that i did was just uh, i looked at some general tips for character creation just so that we don't that we don't um 
you know, that we don't run into a, uh, a cul-de-sac, <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, let's create our party. So, first of all, we get a bit of story here. Yeah? And we're going to read this out. So, introduction. The trial was completed and the sentence was passed. There was no appeal. There was no need. It wasn't as if it was considered a terribly awful sentence anyway. After all, you had not committed one of the hard crimes. You were not thieves or pirates or murderers. Sentences for those of offenses were harsh and generally fatal. Hard miscreants inevitably died. No, your crime was one of not fitting in, of rebelling, or being peculiar in some way, or speaking out against the crown. And for these soft crimes, in scare quotes, the punishment was considered just, appropriate, and most of all, lenient. Well, at least it was considered lenient by those who fit in with society, those who got to live out the rest of their lives above ground. Living in the light of the sun, however, was a privilege that has just been, had it just been stripped from you. All of you were taken to a portal, a one-way permanent teleporter, and thrown in. More introduction. You come to, you come to in a giant cave, unlike any you have ever seen before. Green, luminescent fungi on the ceiling show you how high it goes, hundreds of feet. The cave goes on for what looks like miles in all directions. One of its walls stretches up ominously, ominously nearby, and in the other directions it goes on far beyond the range of your vision in this dim light. It is especially difficult to see things about the cave you are in about. Well, I pronounced that wrong. I stressed that wrong. It is especially difficult to see things about the cave you are in because you are indoors. As your eyes adjust, you can see you are in a fort. Walls and buildings surround you, made of larger blocks of stone crudely mortared together. There are people too, thin, pale people, going about their business. Most pay little attention to you, but one small man watches you carefully from a little ways away. Yes, so this is the setup. We are a group of people who have been sent into exile, which is kind of a giant cavernous underground world. Uh, <clears throat> And, uh, you know, people who do not fit in and who are guilty of, quote-unquote, soft crimes get sent into exile. And, uh, yeah, now we are here. And this is how the game starts. Welcome to exile. Press the button to start making your party. Here we go. So, one thing about party creation in this. Um, one thing I'm not really... I think this is also the case for these early games, but in Spiderweb software games... It's always really good to sort of min-max. There's not really any use in spreading your skill points out. So we want to create kind of really specialized characters. So um, like fighters, like if we make a fighter, you know, you see there are different kinds of weapons, like edged weapons, bashing weapons, and pole weapons. Uh, we want to concentrate on only one of these for each character because it does not really make any sense to spread these around and um yeah you know if we when we're making a fighter we're going to really concentrate on strength and a bit of dexterity and the weapon skills for example and uh you know there's a lot of additional stuff here so essentially so we're going to make a six person party this is a six person or a six person party game <laughs> and um yeah so we're probably going to create two fighters or two kind of fighter characters i think i'm going to make the second one like they're going to get some other stuff like yeah it's going to be more of a woodsman character with some alchemy and poison and whatever um we're going to make a thief character which is uh sort of the you know has thief skills and is kind of a dexterity based character uh, we're going to have mages and priests so mage spells and priest spells and they will really concentrate on their you know like the three remaining characters i'm probably going to make two mages and one priest i don't know if that's good or not we're going to see so um yeah what we have is 60 skill points and we have to you know start creating our character 
So one skill point gives you two health points. Um, uh, the second number here is gold cost. Like later on, you can also train for gold. So let's do 18 here for now. Spell points are one for one skill points. So they are twice as, twice as, twice as expensive. So this first character is going to be an edged weapons character. So these are sort of axes and swords and that stuff. Bashing weapons are obviously maces and pearl weapons are spears. Um, I think you can actually see here, yeah, strength, dexterity, intelligence, edged weapons makes you better at using daggers, swords, axes, etc. Edged weapons are the most common. Bashing weapons are common and cheap. Clubs, maces, hammers, flails, and there's pole weapons, spears of all sorts, halberds, etc. In general, the most expensive, the most rare, and the most powerful. So I think our second fighter character is going to be a pole weapons person. The first one's going to be an edged weapons person. So they don't actually, you know, they don't actually uh, have to fight for for their for their loot, I guess. So we're going to go full on edged weapons. Let's do 10 here. And uh, you know, I've kind of looked at the starting party or the prefab party a bit. And we're probably, I, I think I'm going to be a little more specialized there. Like these characters are kind of, like in the prefab party, there are characters that have edged and bashing and st stuff like that. So not really all that into that, but uh, yeah. So strength, uh, let's go high on strength, like eight, I don't know, and five dexterity. Now we have one skill point left, we're going to put that into a health. So these are sort of the main stats we're going to be concentrating on. Um, health does scale with strength, so we don't really need to put many points into health, especially because uh, those stats all max out at some point. And um, when we level up, we get an amount of health that is uh, correlated to our strength, that is scaled with our strength. So we're going to put a lot of point. We're going to prioritize strength over getting, you know, getting health itself, um, because strength is also good for you know our damage and stuff like that. So we're going to do that. We're going to put points into this. Um, I think these. I think health max out maxes out at two hundred. I think spell points max out at one hundred. Um, and these stats all max out at 20, I believe. We're going to put some points into defense once in a while. Um, defense makes you three effects. It determines how well a character does at parrying, which is useful. Decreases the penalty in combat from bulky armor. We definitely want that, so this character is going to wear plate mail and all this kind of stuff. And occasionally decrease the damage taken from enemy weapons. This is pretty good because uh, we want these fighters to be the ones who take the brunt of damage. Like at the start, we're probably not going to find any any super bulky armor yet, so it probably does not make any sense to already put points into this. But uh, you know, later on, like. Every once in a while, we're going to put a few points into defense. Um, there's also another thing that we can probably put stuff into, and that is assassination. Let's take a look at that. Assassinations, here we go. Sometimes when a character attacks a much weaker monster, the blow will do a good deal of extra damage. The more of this skill you have, the better the chance of this happening, and the stronger the monsters it can happen to. Wait on this, it's very effective when your level is high. So later on we're going to put uh we're going to put some points into assassination as well, once we get like this stuff going properly. Okay, I think this is our first character. Our first character is done. Our first fighter keep. Now we can pick a graphic. So we this is a sword and shield character, I would say, right? Or oh, edged weapon, so it could also be an axe. So we could pick this one, and this one would work. This one would kind of work. Uh, I think I'm going to go with this one. This kind of seems like a, you know, like a proper fighter character, you know, with a blade and a shield and some kind of looks like ring mail or whatever. Yeah, let's pick this one. So this is going to be a lady. Um, oh yeah, names. I maybe have, should have uh, should have gone should have thought up 
some names before yeah i'm that's going to it's going to be okay so she is going to be rezia yes i would like to create another pc player character so this is going to be a second fighter um let's go with 18 here again seven five that's going to be pull weapons um Again, so what we're probably going to do is alchemy and poison with this character as well to just spread it out a bit and to have these. I think with our the problem with mages is that we're we're going to put a lot of points into um, like getting spell points and getting the mage levels uh, or the spell levels um, eats up a ton of skill points. So I don't know if we're going to be able to do alchemy, but it also kind of works for a um, for a you know kind of a if we are role playing here for kind of a woodsman ranger character i guess so uh yeah so and this has some some uh this works well together with with poisons because you will eventually gain the ability to make magic potions uh to make a given potion however your alchemy skill ma must i think this must be above a certain level the higher it is above this level the better the chance of succeeding I have only one character by this but get a lot alchemy is very useful yes we're going to get that and one some of the potions that we can make are poisons and poisons are you will find poisons which you can put on your weapons for extra damage having a few levels in the skill way will make it more likely you will put the poison on at full strength you only really need three to four levels of this more helps but not too much so we're not going to go too high on this but uh, i think that could be useful like if this character can poison their pole arms and uh you know do some damage that way so initially um this character will be a little weaker as a fighter as the other one but um i think this will even out later on so we're not going to we're going to put a few points into alchemy and poison and um it's going to be really useful. I think there's also like resurrection things and so on that we can get. Um, that's going to be really useful to have that. Uh, and um, probably with the level ups coming, we will, you know, we will mostly work on the fighting stuff and put the occasional point into alchemy and poison. So keep. So pole arms, right? Is there any character with a spear? There really isn't. There's this one with a uh, with a staff. Is this a spear? No, this looks more like a magic user. We could do this one. I think this one looks good. Look, looks more like a rogue. Not really like a wooden. Maybe this one actually. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's pick this one for this character. Um. Yeah, name. Name, name, name. Uh. Name, name, name. <laughs> Thomasina. I like to go to literature for this. Would you like to create another PC? Yes, I would. So uh, this is going to be our sort of thief type. So we're going to go a little less on health, uh, maybe 16 for now. We're going to have dexterity as our main and strength as our secondary. Something like that, I guess. Um, and we're going to do archery. Like this, maybe. We're going to get lock picking and disarm traps for now yeah like that so the thing about this uh, these thief skills like disarm uh, especially i think lock picking mainly but also dis disarm traps they scale with dexterity as well so uh we're going to prioritize getting dexterity and uh you know getting all this stuff up but um, maybe we can put the occasional point into that so yeah i guess right so we're going to have yeah 
And um, since this is a mainly dexterity based character, we're going to do archery. I think what I read is that archery is not as useful as melee because um, at some point we will hit severely diminishing returns on the damage we can do. But you know, since this is a. Uh, since we need the dexterity for our thievery skills, uh, we kind of need this character. And it's going to. You know, they are going to do some proper support, I guess, in a supporting role. Standing back and shooting some arrows. I think that's going to be okay. We want to be able to disarm traps, definitely, and we want to be able to pick locks as well. So, keep. So, our thief character, and or archer character, more likely. So let's pick this one. And would also also be this one, but uh let's make this person a a dude. And you're going to be Septimus. Would you like to create another player character? Yes. So now we get into our mage territory. I think we're going to make our two mages first. So health Let's go with 14 to not make them too frail. Let's put a bunch of points into this. 20, I think it's good for a start. And we're going to have three spell levels of mage spells. Um, because uh, I think it doesn't make any sense to go higher than that at the start. But yeah, we're going to put the rest into intelligence. Um, I think at the start you can, you can actually only get up to level 3. It does not really... You, doesn't really make sense to go higher than that, especially because we would uh, sort of gimp on intelligence and we need intelligence as a stat. We're not going to put anything into the others. Maybe get some strength at some point for more health, but we could also, since health points are kind of cheap, we're probably going to increase the health of these, uh, of these with, uh, like directly, like put the occasional point into health and uh, that's it. There's also mage law and item law which are sort of also kind of occasional things. Um, let's see, what was... So, b -b -b mage law. Uh, you will occasionally need to decipher strange magical readings. This skill determines how good you are at this. If your skill is high enough, you may gain a spell or a val valuable piece of information. So we definitely want that. The thing about these is, spread this around the party don't buy more than 25 points total so it is cumulative for all the characters in the party um, over the whole game so we're just going to since this is just one skill point for one thing we're just going to put the occasional skill point into mage law with all the characters so yeah and there's also item law um, gives you a chance of having the items from slain monsters to be identified when you find them. The more of this skill is, that's present, the higher the chance of this happening. So this is also good. Uh, then we don't need to spend too much money for identifying all the items. Um, this is very. This is more expensive, but uh, we're probably going to have one character get these. Uh, maybe also the second fighter, or maybe the thief. The thief could actually get this. Right? So... That's also what we're going to do, but uh, for now we have Mage Keep. So, our first Mage. Let's... Yeah, let's do this lady. Um, you're going to be Clarissa. Yes, I want to create another PC. And uh, this is going to be the exact same character. So, three Mage. 7 intelligence and the rest into spell points. Keep. What did I do? <sighs> okay, that was just the game hitching. I thought I ended the whole thing. So, we have a bunch of robed characters here. I think this is going to be the priest. Um, yeah, with the books, they look like priests, rather. So we have this one. And let's use the other one maybe this one yeah um victor how about that victor yes i would like to create another pc 
And uh, this is going to be the priest. It's very similar. Oh, so 20 spell points. Priest and mage kind of works the same way, it's just different spells. And uh, priest spells, priest spell levels are a little cheaper than mage levels. So we can actually go, go a bit higher on intelligence here. So we can get eight intelligence instead of seven, which is nice. So let's keep this one. It's going to be that. And um, what are you going to be? I'm going to be Michael. All right. And we're done with this. Thank you for watching and see you again next time. Bye bye.